Welcome to our last unit. A few weeks ago, we started looking at mass media theories. Before that, we were really concentrating on what I would call uh, communication theories related to cognitive architecture, dual coding, cognitive load, uh, the benefit cost theory, which is related to the fact that we have very limited uh, working memory uh, capacity. Then we moved into looking at mass media. We looked at McLuhan's media ecology, we looked at cultivation theory, and now we're going to look at one more theory related to the impact of mass media, agenda setting theory. So agenda setting theory, when it first came out, um, its contention was that mass media, newspapers, TV, radio, tell us what to think about. They do that by having a constant focus on something. So if you report on something and make it front page news, you know, week after week after week, then the public begins to believe it's important. So in other words, this is a cause and effect relationship. So if the newspapers and radio or TV gives the impression that it's important, we believe it's important. At first, the theory didn't assert that media had an impact on how we thought about an issue. That's changed. The current theory is that media tells us what issues to think about and how to think about them. How can that happen? How can they be telling us what to think about and how to think about it? I mean, that sounds like ultimate manipulative control here. And this is, this is news, isn't it? Well, one of the reasons is because major mass communication outlets, and I'm talking about TV, radio, um, newspapers are controlled by a few people. I think the last, uh, and my data may be a few years old, but five people controlled about 95% of the major media outlets in the US. So basically your news is filtered by those people. Not directly, but they have policies and they decide what's newsworthy. It's important to understand the goal of these people and I'm not going to say that it's to manipulate you, but it's also not reporting of the news as accurately as possible. In other words, objective reporting of the news is not the highest priority. Well, staying in business is. News production reporting is a business. And if you want to stay in business, you have to have readers, viewers, listeners, whatever, because that equates to more advertising dollars and that keeps you in business. So if you look at newspapers, TV, and you know, radio stations, in the past few years, as the competition has increased with internet, they have tried to become more flashy and, and actually you see that the, the effort is going down to read them. They're trying to make them in a way lower effort, higher reward. Well, objective journalism is probably, in most people's estimation, one of the early casualties of that competition. So we're going to talk a little bit about framing, which is a part of agenda setting theory. And it's, you could refer to it as the spin. Now, your cognitive model or your schema for this word is that it's negative. You know, that framing, somebody is manipulating, they're not reporting it accurately. Well, they could be, but they don't have to be. Because the fact of the matter is, you know, you're going to have humans who are trying to prepare the news or prepare a story. And they have to choose how to interpret that story. They have to choose what to leave in, what to leave out. They have to choose which points to emphasize. And they have to choose the wording. Again, they may be trying to be accurate, but at the same time, they have to grab readers. They have to use sometimes, you know, inflammatory language. They have to do something. So it's not necessarily accurate. Let me give you an example. Let's say if you have a public official, somebody who was just elected to office, and you have two different places or sources that are reporting this. One source could report it this way, that the person was elected because the voters didn't like the alternative. And that source actually may have done a public opinion poll, and that may be entirely accurate, at least based on the people who responded to the poll. Another source may say the candidate received a mandate from the people. Well, there's clearly a difference here in how the candidate is being portrayed. In the one, it was kind of the lesser of the two evils. In the other, it was the people's choice. It's all on the way 
the information was framed. The basic fact is the same. This person was elected. The facts are being chosen, the words are being chosen to frame it. In this particular case, yeah, it's probably that it's going to be a little more on the manipul manipulative side, but it doesn't have to be. If you consider the last election, <clears throat> each side talked about the same stories, but framed them in very different ways. It's just on the words they used and how they portrayed them, whose fault it was, you know, who should get credit for this, all sorts of things were going on. The relationship to norm theory, and this is one of the reasons I introduced norm theory a few weeks back. We believe that news reflects social norms. Okay, so in other words, if you report on something over and over and over again, the people who read it think, well, that must be the way society thinks, and we want to belong. So we adopt what we perceive to be the majority viewpoint. So that's the relationship to norm theory. It's a relationship to social norms. The impact of these traditional media, mass media strategies, TV, radio, etc., is shifting with the introduction of the web because there's less effect when the news is read on the web. Major reason is it's less obvious what's important. On a TV, you know, the news, our lead story is, and in the newspaper, they plaster it on the front page. But on the internet, where you're putting a lot of things on one page, it's not as obvious what is considered most important. So you're losing some of that impact. Also on the web, you don't get a constant del deluge of the same point of view. So unlike newspapers, TV, etc., where they can keep hammering something, it doesn't really occur as much on the web. You can shift pretty easily to another source of news, and people do that. Some key takeaways from this particular session or this particular lecture. Media has a powerful effect on what we think about and how we think about it. Don't assume when you read any one source that you are getting all the facts. And remember, a fact is only a fact based on our interpretation. Okay? Every piece of news had to be selected and prepared by a human, so there will be a bias. And again, it doesn't mean it's intentional. It doesn't mean it's negative. It's just what is. That brings me to some notes on the forum. <clears throat> this is the hardest forum that my students have to do. And it's not because it's difficult to kind of talk about, but it's going to be difficult to hold your opinions in check. But I expect you to do it. I'm going to have you look at two articles on the same subject, and I can tell you right now it was the passage of the... Um, what some people refer to as Obamacare, another for the official title, is the Affordable Health Care Act, which, by the way, is an interesting framing of that issue. In fact, they do polls where if you ask people whether they like Obamacare, a lot of them say no. If you ask the same people whether they're in favor of the Affordable Health Care Act, a majority say yes. They're exactly the same thing. It's just that they were spun differently. They were framed differently. I've probably irritated some of you already, but it's just what it is. If you look them up, they're the same thing. This forum is focused on framing, not evaluating the accuracy of the articles. It is not a forum for political statements. In fact, in the forum, I should not be able to discern your political leanings. This is going to be really hard for you because you have to step back from whatever you believe and focus on analyzing a communication strategy. It's exactly the same thing that you have had to do on all of the others. This one is more difficult because it's emotionally charged for some people. It's a good test for you. So the articles, I have one article that was reported by Fox News and one that was reported by NPR. And if anybody comes back in the forum and says, well, this one's accurate and this one isn't, or this one seems to be fair and balanced and this one seems to be one-sided, I'm going to send you back 
to look more closely because both of them had to select words and it creates an impression for the reader. And I expect you to be able to discern that objectively. So good luck on that.